Welcome to this uh, presentation on the Melbourne Rapid Fields, the MRF. Uh, it was developed by myself, uh, Professor Ingress, and my colleague, Dr. George Kong, who's a glaucoma specialist. Um, the MRF is a disruptive technology. It produces very sophisticated vision tests on an Apple iPad. It is not available on Android, but Apple iPads are superior technology and they produce, allow us to produce very precise vision testing equipment. Um, as you probably are aware, many conventional visual machines are expensive, they're not portable, they can't be used across multiple clinics. Their data exportation analysis uh, is by printing and emailing. The MRF is really an, a new way of doing testing. Uh, the patient simply looks at the central fixation point, the red point uh, indicated one in uh, the slide here, they, if they see a dot, a spot, as indicated by two, they then press in the response touch zone, as indicated by three. The test can be done quite easily on an iPad 12.9 uh, large screen or an iPad 9.7 or one of the smaller iPads. The testing will take anywhere from three minutes on a large screen to about four or five minutes on a smaller screen. Um, it's automated threshold primary software. It's been cleared um, and is registered by the FDA as a class one medical device. It's also registered by the Australian TGA and we have recently um, got Indian uh, approval through the CDSCO. Um, just as background, our MRF apps were highlighted as the newest and most innovative research at ARVO, which is the Association of Research and Vision Ophthalmology, um, and the full threshold testing uh, goes out to about 30 degrees. It does so by changing fixation and allows visual field tests way out to 30 degrees in the horizontal meridian. Um, here is an example of how the test works. Um, a patient looks at the central fixation spot and the uh, dots uh, appear on the screen, the fixation moves to the periphery, and the dots appear in the far corners to measure the peripheral regions, and uh, the, you'll notice the dots also get a little bit larger. For a patient to do this, they need to wear their normal reading glasses, and they can be in either single vision, bifocal, or multifocal formats. It doesn't affect the test outcomes. Um, so basically the test is portable, it, the iPad provides a stimulus display, it's been clinically validated, um, there's a paper out by George Kong uh, a few years back where the interclass correlation coefficient is 0.93 against the Humphrey. It has reliability indices so you can tell how well your patients pr um, responded. It does a progression analysis so you can tell whether the patient uh, gets worse or better. It is user-friendly in, in terms of having 14 languages that it supports. Hindi is one of them. It has screening support for those who want a quick look, and it has red, green, and amber uh, color-coded uh, results to indicate whether you need to give this patient any further attention. And to, to be blunt, it's very affordable at a fraction of the cost of normal perimetry. Here is a typical result, as many um, ophthalmologists and optometrists could be aware of. You'll find the decibels are represented by the numbers, and a 30 decibel is what's expected for most people. Um, you'll find these little green box at the top right corner that says this test is normal, and you've got total deviation, pattern deviation that is typical of a Humphrey. You'll notice on the left-hand side, the test took two minutes, 48 seconds, uh, to be completed. Uh, basically, it has all the things that you want of a perimeter. Uh, here is an example of a <clears throat> patient with a mild defect, a mean defect of minus three. One can see a very small central loss as shown on the Humphrey on the left, and on the right you can see a much a more um, uh, greater loss as shown by the MRF. It took about five minutes to test, those of you who may or may not be able to read, the Humphrey took about eight minutes to do the same test. Um, here's a more advanced loss as coded red with a mean defect of minus 11. 
um, took seven minutes to test, um, and this type of defect is typical of glaucoma. And uh, if you do, uh, as we have here, um, about 100 patients, um, in the black dots on the left are shown uh, patients with severe defects, and the gray are patients with mild defects. You can see there's a very lovely linear res relationship between the Humphrey, which is shown on the x-axis, and the MRF shown on the y-axis. The amount of variability is about 4 to 5 dB, as you shown on the right. There's very strong correlation between the two tests, and that has been published in one of our publications. I'll talk about a bit later in 2017. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the RAC, which is the clinical uh, capacity to uh, detect disease, uh, in, in this figure we show the RAC for red, uh, for the MRF in red, and the RAC for the Humphrey in blue. Um, this was data that was done independently by a group from Sydney um, and published by Schulz et al. in 2017 and led to our Australian Therapeutic Goods Certificate um, because it basically showed that the MRF was doing the same job as is the Humphrey as the blue lines. So it's been quite rigorously tested and approved in Australia. Um, how could you use it if you already had a perimeter? We quite often get asked that question. Well, obviously, you can use it as a screening test. You can take it out into your waiting room. You can take it into the community. Uh, it's a very cheap screening test, um, and it can be applied very quickly. Uh, it can also be used for monitoring um, patients. So it, we have shown that our simulation has shown that patients can be detected in about two and a half years. Um, with normal testing, clinical testing, but they'll be detected in just under a year if they use uh, monthly or weekly uh, tests on, on themselves at home. Um, also, and in particular, if they've got chronic diseases such as glaucoma, diabetes, AMD, or neural conditions, say stroke, then the MRF will be a ally in your treatment and management of that patient because it'll tell you when the patient gets worse. Um, here we have uh, some screening applications. Those of you who want to go out in the community, um, on the left you've shown um, a typical result of a, a Humphrey visual field full test that took about eight minutes. Um, and on the right is the MRF screening result showing the same nasal step, inferior nasal step. The color-coded bar on the right uh, is an indicator for whether it's normal or abnormal. In this case, it's abnormal and it took two minutes to do. This is uh, typical of some 250 eyes that have been screened in Australia. And on the bottom left, you can see table one shows you the sensitivity is in fact um, very good at about 94%. And if you look at an octopus, compare it to the octopus, it's 86%. The uh, impressive thing though is shown on the figure on the right is that the patients actually found it uh, a very easy test to do. They found it comfortable and they enjoyed the experience. So patients will not be turned off from this test and will like the, um, the testing environment and the testing outcome. Um, our MRF comes in four different uh, versions. There is, uh, they're listed here. They're, they've, they've been designed to target the uh, diseases that threaten vision and take vision, uh, glaucoma, neural, macular, and diabetes. Um, in those uh, in that software is an acuity test, typically a high contrast test, but it can also be low luminance, low contrast, particularly for retinal or neural disease, and acuity and noise, which is very sensitive for a neural disease. I'll show you that in a second. And there are perimetry tests, which will either have a 24-2 grid or a radial grid or a specialized grid. Um, at the very bottom left is shown the screening test that one gets with a glaucoma pattern. Uh, I've mentioned acuity, but haven't shown you before. The acuity target is a Landolt C, which comes in one of four different orientations. Um, is the patient is simply requested to select the, the orientation of the C within the box. Um, with children, we quite often say, the wheel in the box is broken. Show me which, which part of the wheel is broken, and they simply select it. As I said earlier, you can have high contrast, low luminance, low contrast, and acuity and noise versions. 
uh, for different applications. Um, this is a typical uh, finding that we had in a stroke patient. Here, a stroke patient took about, as you can see, two and a half minutes to be tested per eye. This patient, although they had stroke and all, although they had motor weakness, were unaware of their vision loss, uh, and they were wanting to drive home. And when the vision loss was pointed out to them, their wife uh, commented that um, she was terrified driving into the hospital to have the uh, husband tested. And in fact, we strongly recommend that the patient doesn't drive until the stroke either uh, subsists or um, they recover or they uh, show a permanent loss and probably shouldn't drive at all. Um, we have many publications now. Here are four of them that list the capacity of the MRF to uh, do its job. Um, one of the interesting ones, the third one down, tablets at the bedside, where we've used the tablet in the hospital at the bedside of patients. Um, and uh, over the page, we've got um, probably the most important one, the six-month longitudinal comparison of a tablet with a Humphrey perimeter. We show that it compares incredibly well. Um, and the final one, which discusses the home monitoring uh, uh, of using the tablet uh, for measuring visual fear loss. Um, AppView Technologies are our partner in India. We're very proud to have AppView working for us, and we hope that you will contact them if you're interested in this product.